Nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in All praises are due to Allah And we send peace and blessings to our Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam We send peace and blessings to his family And to all of those who followed our Prophet Muhammad uh, in goodness Alhamdulillah we have a very interesting topic for today All topics are interesting um, But I personally like uh, this topic Which is uh, regarding uh, science and uh, Islam um, and this topic is quite pertinent, it's quite important, um, especially for our day and age in which we deem it to be the age of knowledge, the age of scientific discovery, the age of scientific methodology, etc., etc. So um, it's very interesting to see um, what Islam has to say about uh, science, scientific development, the science, all the, the entire scientific method etc as especially because we do know that uh, there is a famous debate which is science versus religion right like which is correct or which is better science versus religion now i'm going to start by defining trying to define what science is and what religion is so maybe we can mention that the difference between science uh, and islam and religion is that science basically tries to find out how things were made in this universe and uh, religion or islam uh, tells you why they were made okay so science will explain to you how human body was made uh, although the, the quran does speak about this but it's not the main point of the quran um but this is when we go to science, you know, we understand blood vessels, etc., etc. But it's in religion that we understand why we were created and not just how. Because the how without the why is incomplete. The how without the why is incomplete. Which is why I think it's a very absurd to say science versus religion. I don't think that this uh, is a fair way of uh, putting the question. It's like... Uh, it's like uh, asking you, do you prefer, do you prefer uh, food or drinks? I mean, each have their own, their own, uh, uh, their own specialties that the other doesn't. They attack different things uh, in life. So, as we say, we can basically define science. You know, a uh, scientific method is, uh, um, we could say it's uh, an empiric way of looking at things. Okay. Uh, in which uh, in which the results of that specific study will be able to be uh, it can be re replicated basically when you make a scientific discovery this is something that can be replicated by everybody else otherwise it is not science and also perhaps there is a difference of science and philosophy uh, actually back in the day when we were speaking about people like plato people like aristotle etc um although we call them philosophers they were actually scientists you know because as we notice philosophers nowadays and uh, this is why people just lost their way when uh, they were uh, p p people lost their way in philosophy and arts because they completely disregarded the scientific process they were basically philosophers the new age philosophers you know i don't call them philosophers because they don't know anything they are trying to understand the world and without the scientific process in it. Uh, science is something very important. Uh, religion, especially Islam, does not condemn the study of science. Uh, it actually encourages, you know. We, we see that the first verse that Allah revealed was Iqra, Bismi Rabbika Alladhi Khalaq, read in the name of your Lord. Uh, this verse, as many ulama mention, encourages people to study with the intention of pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is why we have a lot of Muslims in our ancient well not ancient, they're not that old uh, but in our old uh, Muslim civilizations we have Muslims who invented bi binary numbers we had Muslims who invented uh, flights you know, before, way before the Wright brothers um, did it we had uh, Muslims who invented uh, a lot of numbers, you know, we had basically a lot of scientists, a lot of inventions. This wouldn't happen if Islam was a religion that was 
uh, that was pro. Uh, it, it wouldn't happen if we had a religion that was not pro-science, such as Christianity. Now, a lot of people tend to put Christianity and Islam in the same box and say they're all religions, but very different, as Christianity is a very dogmatic religion. And back in the day, it was completely against science, which is why they, I think they burned Galileo Galilei, and uh, which is why the findings of Nicola Copernicus, he only published them after he died. I mean, he left it in his will um, that, you know, he only published this after I died because he knew the repercussions of going against the church. These things did not happen in Islam. So this is how we do see that Islam was really a religion that always uh, was thriving scientific development. Now what we see in the West, these are all scientific ideologies and bases that came from Islam. It's just that they flipped, it, the, they flipped the script, uh, unfortunately, and they do not allow, nowadays they don't allow, uh, Muslim countries, Muslim civilizations to prosper because if they did, if they would just make it fair game everyone can uh, develop their own scientific methods etc. we would have a real competition but you know, we don't want to get into politics it's not a conversation of politics no. so so I think uh, now we have gone through the first part of our talk, which is, does uh, is religion against science? Uh, no, absolutely not. It does not go against science. Religion and science go hand in hand together because they both serve different purposes. Uh, now, the second thing we want to discuss is, now how does science complement Islam? How does it complement religion? Well, to us, it complements in various ways. And... Uh, the, what I see um, from the flaw, the flaw that the, the Western civilizations are having nowadays is discarding religion completely. Is claiming that to be religious is unscientific, even though Isaac Newton was a religious person. Uh, you know, so basically, you know, even though we have many religious people who had amazing scientific uh, discoveries you know so i don't I, I don't really know why they would say that and think that nowadays you know it's probably the trend the shaitan is trying to to pull um they're saying that uh, to be religious is unscientific which is wrong both of them go hand in hand now allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the quran wouldn't say that the quran is a book of science, okay, and uh, we can speak about this um, because this is something that uh, we see a lot of people tend to make a mistake. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of science in the Quran, speaks about his creation so that we can meditate on his creation and we understand that he exists through his creation. Now, when we study science, we're basically studying the creation of Allah subhanahu Ta'ala, which is is good. Now, the Quran in itself is not a detailed book of science. I do not speak about science, uh, but it does hint here and there to some aspects that may be of scientific uh, nature, meaning that uh, things that point out to the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, in various parts, Allah points to his creation. When I look at the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we see clear-cut evidence of his existence. And uh, let's try to speak about this for now. Um, how do we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists through his creation? Well, firstly, we know that the universe was created, meaning everything that exists was created. That's step one. Now, why do we say it was created? Because we either have two options. It's uh, either everything was created, uh, meaning there was a point in time where time began and uh, whatever happened before that is irrelevant because nothing existed. So there was a point that existence happened. Or we could say that the universe was uncreated and that means that it always existed and that we are living in an infinite loop. Some scientists have, some philosophers have postulated this idea. 
although this idea would not make any sense. Because if something can just come out of nothing, then that wouldn't happen only once. Meaning we would have universes existing and unexisting, uh, you know, uh, many, many, many times. Like you would be walking and suddenly you would see a pony out of nowhere and then a dragon out of nowhere and then a crocodile out of nowhere and then they would just disappear. Because that's basically what you're saying if you say that the universe just popped itself into existence. But it doesn't happen. So therefore, we can conclude clearly that the universe was created. Meaning that there was a time that nothing existed. And uh, the world as we see in... When the, the scientists, when they, you know, speaking, when they speak about um, uh, the beginning of the universe, they say it's when the laws of physics began. Okay, we can define that as one of the laws of physics began in this universe. So we know that there's a creator. We know that there's a creator for this universe. But we still see certain uh, atheists who will say, okay, fine, there's a creator to the universe. That doesn't mean that this creator is God. Okay, let's take them up on this challenge. And this is something, this is a, is, is a debate that's uh, normally called uh, ADism, okay? And uh, a lot of people nowadays, because of cultural language, cult cultural appropriation, they 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 use the word atheist, but what they really mean is a deist, because deism is the belief in a god, and a deism is a belief that there is no god. Theism is a belief in religion, and atheism is a belief in non-religion that it doesn't exist. So technically speaking, an atheist is an agnostic. Technically, if we were to go to the root of the words. An atheist is what we would consider an atheist, someone who does not believe in God. So, even if they say the universe was created, you know, they would claim that it was just an accident. It was just, uh, it was just, uh, you know, a chemical reaction that happened out of nowhere. And this really doesn't make any sense because things don't happen without a cause. First of all. Second of all, we look at the perfection of the universe, and we can tell that there was someone behind. There is something behind the creation of the universe, and this th this this entity that created the universe, we can tell that he had a purpose. We can tell that it had a mind. It 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 was it created the universe willingly. It wasn't an accident, because the entire universe is what we can call perfectly imperfect. Perfectly imperfect. Why? Because. It has just the right imperfections, just the right deviations, so that we can be created, so that we could exist. There's also something that people tend to call the clockman's argument, or we could uh, uh, the the perfect create perfectly imperfect. That's the clockman's argument, and then we could have the dice argument, which basically would say if you would uh, flip a dice. 70 times and it comes out 66666 six, six, six every time. What would you say? You would say the dice is rigged because it is not possible uh, that you can predict the probability of, uh, sorry, that, that, that you can accurately get this exact same outcome 100 times every time you toss a dice. So the probability of the universe actually lasting this long, of the universe actually having galaxies, of the universe actually having a sun, of our planet Earth to exist, um, is it's a long shot. It's the one of the biggest long shots ever. And yet, here we are. So now we know that this universe was created. And we know that this universe was created by something. And there's also an interesting phenomenon recently that was discovered called uh, dark matter. Dark matter is basically something that's possibly 90% of the universe that controls everything and uh, some people even say that it's it's like it, there's something behind the universe pulling the strings so you see the the scientist the atheist wants to believe in allah but he can't you know because of arrogance because of of something the evidence is right there so as we can see when we are when we study science, if we really study it to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will open these doors for you. He will let you know because you want to find out more about Him. 
We can know more about Allah through His creation and through His revelation. We should study both creation and revelation. Study the creation of Allah, which is nature. Uh, you want to study the human body. You want to study animals. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, He says, Have you not seen the, 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 the camel, how we have created them? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to look at the creations of mankind. And Allah says that the creation of the heavens were far greater than the creation of men. So um, but th this is possibly why I really like to study uh, astrophysics because it is part of the study of, uh, of heavens. We don't really know where the first heaven begins, where it stops, etc. Where we don't really know that, but we do know that the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is amazing. So, as we have been discussing, I think we have uh, successfully mentioned that the universe was created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we can tell through science, you know, and it's something logical. It's something logical that there is a God and he created the universe. There's also uh, another argument I heard by, by someone, which is a very interesting argument, um, could sound a little bit uh, nonsensical to someone who's not paying attention, but the mere fact that you cannot disprove the existence of God proves his, his existence. Okay? Um, now this can sound funny because you say, hold on, why do you mean you can't prove that he exists, that he doesn't exist, and that is proof of his existence himself? Okay, so uh, Tahmeen, I'm going to ask for your help here. If I asked you, Tahmeen, uh, do you think mermaids exist? What would be your response? Um, I would say that I don't think they exist. Uh, or well, I'm not 100% sure, really. But yeah, there's, uh, there's no reason for me to kind of think that they exist. Okay. Let me ask you, put this question in, a, in another way. Do you believe that a creature can exist that is both fish and mammal at the same time? I mean, half fish and half mammal. Is that possible? Uh, probably not. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's not possible. It's not, it's not possible. You cannot be half fish and half mammal. That, that doesn't work. Okay? Because, you know, your whole respiratory system would just be completely um, messed up. Okay? So, we don't need to, like, explore every single corner of the ocean to know that you know that those mythical mermaids that we have depicted don't exist we don't need to do that because logically they don't make sense if they existed it would brace it would basically destroy everything we know of biology you know and we know that what we know is correct so therefore that cannot be correct now when we look at it at every single angle you cannot there's no evidence to disprove that there is a creator. There's no evidence to disprove that. And on the other hand, you have evidence to prove the existence of a creator. Now, the atheists, something they don't like to admit, is that the belief that God doesn't exist, that is what atheism actually is. It's a belief. They believe God doesn't exist. We believe he does. So it's my belief. Versus their belief, you know, looking it at their perspective, it's belief versus belief. It's not science versus religion, okay? Because if they believe in science religiously, then it kind of becomes their religion. Because if you would have had a, a true scientific mind, like a true mind of, of a thinker, you know, you would give everything a chance. You would give the chance of the existence of a god, and then you would give the chance of the, of the non-existence of a God. And you would realize that the existence of a God makes a lot more sense. And it would fill the gaps better than the non-existence of a God. Now, sometimes atheists will say, you know, God of the gaps. When you don't know something, you just say, oh, God did it. Well, it's not exactly that simple, okay? It's not, oh, okay, if I don't know something, it means God did it. No, I know God did it. I just, I don't know how. Okay, I don't know how God did it, but I do know that he did. Okay, am I making sense? I don't know if there's any questions so far. I'm speaking about a lot of things. Maybe we can take a small break and see if there's any questions or if there's any comments. By the way, guys, I'm not a scientist. 
uh, I like to study uh, science. I uh, I uh, let um, I have a small background in psychology, um, which made me study a lot of biology, study a lot of uh, um, how do you call the thing of the genes, genealogy, etc. Uh, anthropology and on my free time I like to read about astrophysics watch videos lectures here and there so I'm not a scientist I don't claim to be a scientist but I do know that uh, it's very good for a Muslim to study science to fortify his iman that's something very very good there's a brother who sent a message um, I don't know what he said can you see the message Tahmeen um there's a few messages uh okay. what is it in the chat or I, I think it's in the chat i think so i don't know okay um in, do you know do you have the brother's name i don't know no no just uh tell me all the messages related to our talk okay oh okay okay cool cool yes. um yes. so uh let me just see if there was a question uh if there are any questions just uh drop it now in the chat Boro says okay. science doesn't claim objective truth either. Um, yep. And uh, da, 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 da. where is that brother's chat? Which which chat? Oh, uh, there's a chat called that? No Mic. I'll, I'll just tag oh, you in it. No Mic. Called the uh, No Mic. No. Yeah, I'll just tag you in it. Okay, No Mic. Hold on. I had a question, okay. but I was going to wait until after you're done. Uh, was that a long question? Uh yeah, I guess. <laughs> okay, ask ask me now. I'll decide if I answer now or if I'll answer later. Okay. Uh well, I'm 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 glad that we uh, that you guys are hosting this because I was speaking about evolution with a friend because I come from the world of like scientific debate and um and I was reading into different scholars' opinions, something it's compatible, something it's not, man being formed from clay blah blah blah, all that. Um I wanted to tell you what my perspective was and I wanted to see if you could tell me if it's it's like it's it sounds right to you because I I don't want to speak without knowledge and that's kind of what I was worried that I was doing so I wanted to explain the position to you and then you tell me what you think of it but if you want to do that after we can um okay uh I will yeah you can do that cuz uh the next point I was going to speak about evolution so if you can summarize it in like 2 3 minutes you know, let's be straight to the point. How oh, yeah. do you understand not, evolution? Yeah, well, it's not just evolution, but basically, I, so, um, so to me, the way I understand science is science is the is studying what we is what we know based on observable evidence. So any scientist knows and probably hopes that everything we know now is going to be proven wrong. That's the whole point of science. Every single hundred years, two hundred years. We look back and we go, those people were out of their minds. They're really stupid. Um, yeah. So, yeah, and that's why, that's why I said earlier that science doesn't claim objective truth. And that's, to me, the big difference is religion, Islam, claims objective yeah. truth. But science just says, well, basically, this is kind of what we know now. So with evolution, I, I, said, I said to my friend, I was like, so you're saying, you know, based on observable evidence, it kind of looks like that's what's happened. And they're like, yeah, I'm like, sure, I agree with that. But that doesn't mean it's true. Like, that's sure, based on what we've seen and, like, the limited evidence we have, because we obviously don't have all the evidence. Um, obviously, thing, new things come out every single day. So I'm like, sure. If you look at just what we have now, it kind of points towards that. But to me, that doesn't mean it's objectively true. And so, okay. yeah, I don't know what your opinion is on that. view. Um, okay, great. So firstly, let me just uh, speak about objective truth, you know. Um, I think that uh, in in many ways in science we can find uh, objective truths. I think that uh, there are certain facts, like well grounded facts, that there's just no way they can be wrong. Okay, like for example, to say to claim that the Earth is flat, you know that that wouldn't make sense at all. That just goes against almost every single law of nature or physics uh, ever. It would not make sense at all. To claim that the 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 sun revolves around the earth, for example, that would not make sense whatsoever. And it's very interesting to know how you know Isaac Newton discovered these things without telescopes. He just sat down with some mathematical equations and he, you know, found that out via his scientific calculations. So I think in some things we can have certain objective truths, but 
you did mention something very important, which is that it's always uh, updating. So we can say that the the uh, the the details. Okay. So Isaac Newton basically, let's just say he invented gravity. Okay, because <laughs> that's what. Uh, people normally say he invented gravity. He wrote down the, the theories of gravity, which was remarkable. And before he did that, people were like, nah, bro, that's not it's not going to happen. It's not true. It's blah, blah, blah. He managed to prove everybody wrong. And then Einstein comes. And Einstein tends to see that, hold on, Isaac Newton, you're not, you weren't completely wrong, okay? You were mostly right, but... You failed in this and this and this and that. And then he just corrected. So we have these corrections that tend to happen. And this is what our civilization right now, our age, we're seeing these corrections in which we are just fine tuning uh, our understanding. And maybe we can have even better understanding later on that could make what we have learned obsolete, but not entirely. Okay, like. Someone's not going to come and say the earth is flat. Someone's not going to come and say the earth doesn't revolve around the sun. But someone did come and they did say that the sun and the earth move at the same time. So I think that, uh, yeah, although science uh, evolves, but it's uh, it's quite well-grounded uh, information. There's something uh, Karl Popper said, uh, a very interesting guy, which is uh, basically that there's no scientific theory that is true, that is correct. Because every scientific theory is not wrong until it is proven wrong. So this challenge, you know, of prove it wrong, this is really good. And this is what we see is lacking in our days. Our uh, contemporary, post-contemporary age, I don't know what age we are right now. You know, if it's a post-contemporary age, if we're in a contemporary age, digital age, whatever you want to call it. But our scientists right now, they don't like the truth to be challenged, which is not good. And this is how we stop developing. This is how we go backwards, because the truth is unchallenged, you know. So, um, uh, yeah, I think I commented on that. Now, on evolution, which was the next point I was going to make, uh, we're going to speak a bit about evolution. Well, what is evolution? Basically, evolution is adapting to survive. Adapting to survive. This is uh, evolution, okay, is when a species adapts so that it can survive. Now, is this... True, yes, this is true. This is observably true, and we cannot deny that evolution is a thing, that evolution exists, that species adapt to survive. Okay, now, does this mean that the theory that the Quran plays, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything, is it wrong? No, it is not wrong, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us with this ability of adapting to survive, just that, you know, humans tend to be pretty good. Does this mean that humans evolved from monkeys? No, it does not mean that humans evolved from monkeys. Okay, it does not mean that. And uh, the, the, the evidence to prove that is very superficial. Just because we have, you know, similarities, they are assuming, the atheists assume that we 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 evolved from monkeys, but no, they have one piece of the argument, but they don't have the entire thing. And uh, this is something that we will always be limited. I think someone, oh, I see there's like a chat, a little chat box over here on the right. Okay, so um, uh, one of the guys mentioned that, uh, you know, that we basically are limited um, with our human capacity and yes we are limited with the human capacity uh, unfortunately you know or fortunately i don't know if that is a good thing or if that is a bad thing um i have seen some studies showing you know bones of neanderthals showing uh, Neander neanderthals are not humans they're other creation and interestingly when i was reading uh, tafsir ibn kathir he mentioned that before humans create uh, were created and before the jinns were created, that there were these creatures that roamed the earth called Al-Hin Wal-Bin. And this is how Ibn Kathir mentions them. So there were other uh, sapient creatures, meaning there were other intelligent creatures that have roamed the earth. Okay, um, We don't dispute the fact that maybe other creatures existed. Okay, Maybe they were close to humans, maybe, perhaps. But as humans, we did not evolve from, from monkeys. They are monkeys, they are there. 
they are, you know, we could say that technically we're from the ape family, you know, because we're not felines. We're not, uh, we're not, uh, how do you call dogs, canines, you know, we're definitely not fish, we're definitely not birds, so we could be closest to them, sure, but this doesn't mean that we evolve. So uh, the theory of, of evolution is correct, and I don't think that it contradicts with the fact that we uh, were created from, uh, from Adam, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam alayhi salam uh, with his hands. There's literally no contradiction between uh, these two things, you know, you, you, you're just, people are just postulating. Let me just read uh, some comments here. My major was physics and astronomy, definitely beautiful experience. What are Islamic perspectives on artificial intelligence? Well, I would say that artificial intelligence, um, well, some doesn't really say anything good or bad, you know. Although I have a very, very deep fear that, you know, this is actually pretty satanic and uh yeah i don't like artificial intelligence it scares me a lot science is limited yeah assalamu alaikum can science be used as a proof the quran is from the creator now we should be very careful when we use this because science is always getting updated and sometimes science can be wrong uh i think i i mentioned here about the verse was shamsu tajiri that uh, the sun moves and if you would read this verse on the 50s, they would have said the Quran was wrong because the Quran says that the sun moves, but the sun doesn't move. And then in the early 90s, everyone's like, oh, wait a minute, the sun moves again. And then maybe someone's going to find out that, no, actually, the sun doesn't move, although I highly doubt that that will happen. But since science is, uh, you know, is uh, changing, I think that it could be used if you are someone who really understands Islam and really understand science, then yeah, sure, maybe, uh, maybe then. Uh, but if not, then uh, no. Okay, like we have Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala, which was very, very intelligent man, uh, mastered almost everything that there was to master in this world, and uh, he lived in the medieval ages, six hundred years ago, and he concluded from the Quran that the the earth was round. Many Muslim scholars concluded that the earth was round. Why? Because they both understood uh, the teaching, the revelation, and they understood creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they managed to do that. So um, I think we can use that, which is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala many times in the Quran points to creation, but we have to be cautious with that. So from a purely scientific lens, our theories of truth are subjective. Okay, yes, from a scientific lens. When I say something is true in science, I'm saying it checks out on a specific criteria. That's a deeper philosophical thing, though. Yeah, no scientist will ever tell you that any claim can't be proven wrong. That's literally the opposite of science. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I agree with it. How can you say humans are from apes? Humans are a separate creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, I'm not saying humans are from apes. I said that, you know, if we would... If we would classify, like, you know, when uh, you study, let's say, uh, when you just classify animals, you know, and you say canines, uh, say canines, you know, you say, uh, you say um, fish, birds, you know, then perhaps we would, could be closer to, you know, to the ape family than to not the ape family, not saying that we come from apes or that we are apes. No, not really. But, you know, the... There, there seems to be some semblance, okay? But we definitely did not evolve from apes. I hope that this part uh, is clear, okay? Alhamdulillah. So, um, I like to normally, continuing with the, my talk, and then we'll go back to the comments. Um, I like to look at uh, the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in three perspectives. I already mentioned the first, which is the creation of the universe. Now we establish Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists. We know that he exists. We know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the universe. Now, how do we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a religion? How do we know? How do we know that we are uh, a, a religion? Sorry, how do we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has his own religion? Because understand, we have deism, which is the belief in a, in a God. And then we have theism, okay, which is a belief in uh, religion. Okay, now... Some people might say, okay, just because God exists does not mean he has a religion. Now, to that, I would normally say, okay, just let's look at creation. Let's look at creation. 
when we look at creation, when we look at the universe, when we look at galaxies, when we look at solar systems, we do understand and we can see that everything is systematically organized. We can tell that there is an organization there. Okay, there's a very beautiful organization, you know, and uh, it's all mathematically correct. And, you know, maths is actually one of the ways that we can tell that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a system, that the creator of the universe has a system. Why? Because math was, um, let's say, let's say, uh, if everything respects in the universe, respects mathematical rules, that means that the one creating the universe, okay, he has rules. He created the universe to observe certain rules, okay, which is why mathematics is not invented, it is discovered, it's discovered. you have to, you know, put maths into, um, you have to test it, and if it works, it works, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work, it's wrong, okay, you can't just make up your own version of maths, no, it has to go in accordance to how the creation of the universe is, to how the universe works, and this is how we can see that definitely this universe has a creator, and how this creator has a system. So it would be really, really, uh, you know, foolish to me to believe that, you know, with all this perfection around us, and to say that the God that created this universe doesn't really care about anything, this wouldn't make uh, a lot of uh, sense to me. But I did hear a couple of atheists say, um, for example, that, oh, you know, um, the God who created, the, if, if God created the universe, then he's flawed, then he's weak, then he is, uh, you know, he, uh, um, he actually failed at creating the universe because we're just one planet out of billions and trillions of stars that died, that never got to live. So basically, and this universe is going to get destroyed, right? Uh, I hope everyone knows that, I mean, everything that exists is eventually, according to science, not even not even going to get to the Qur'an, not there yet, but the Qur'an does say that. Um, but according to science, everything will just, will just uh, stop existing. And uh, one of the interesting things, you know, is something they call the Big Rip, which is the universe will expand so fast, so fast, that it's actually just going to tear itself and it's going to stop existing. Now, all these things uh, are mentioned in the Qur'an. And this is where the atheist fails to see that this universe was created to be destroyed. It was not created to last. The universe that was created to last is the akhirah, is the afterlife. That was created to last. This universe here is just something that is, uh, it's just for a specific time. You know, it's just for... Uh, a uh, small amount of time that we're staying in this universe and then خلاص, it's gone after that and it's not something that uh, will last so this universe was made to be destroyed uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran says كل شيء هالك. everything will be destroyed وَيَبْقَ وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ ذُو الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَامِ and uh, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remain it's very interesting how these ideas were already mentioned in Islam, in the Qur'an, way before scientific thought, scientific methodology was discovered, okay? But these things were there. Way before, when people used to think of something they call, I think was heliocentrism, when they thought that the earth was the center of the universe, you know, Islam did not say that. It did, it did not say that. When... When people believed that you know that there was no there was no uh, um, there were no galaxies there were nothing you see Islam never actually said that you know humans we are the center of the entire creation etc we're like the best of uh, we're like uh, the the um, let's say the most perfect etc um, no uh, there is a very very big difference between the way Islam points to science and the way Christian condemns science we have very very different things okay so i think i deviated a little bit from my point which uh, the point i was trying to make was that we can tell by the systematic creation of the universe that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the creation of this world uh that the one who created this world has a system and therefore he has a religion and now when we ask what is his religion we can successfully 
say that the one who created the universe is one. And therefore, anything that is polytheistic goes out of the window. Right there. Anything that is polytheistic goes out of the window. Right there. Because it is just one God. If there were two, then they would fight. And one power would cancel the other. And therefore, no God, no universe, nothing would exist. Because if, if there were two gods and one says stand and the other says sit, what would happen? You'd probably cease to exist. And, you know, it wouldn't, uh, it, it wouldn't work that way. Now, we have... Three main religions who claim to be monotheistic, okay, which is, uh, we know we have Judaism, we have Islam, and we have Christianity. Um, we have these three religions that they cl claim to be monotheistic. But as we see Christianity, um, we can start with Christianity uh, again. With um, this is science and Islam, so I'm not going to go in in detail on the, you know, on the differences between interfaith differences but christianity you know uh, their mistake is that they are not really sincerely monotheistic they actually believe they are they do what i like to call is a uh, you know a uh, they deviated from the pattern which the pattern is believe and worship in one god believe and worship in one god old testament is what it says all prophets said that now, when we have Christians, now they're trying to say that, oh, no, it's not one God. It's actually triune gods, and there's a whole lot of explanation to that. But basically, they're not monotheistic to the core. And when we come to Judaism, you know, something to me that clearly shows it's not uh, the, 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 the religion, the chosen religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well, firstly, it's a religion that is only for a specific group of people. Um, it's a religion that... Uh, benefits the, the the strong it's a religion that oppresses the weak and we know that the one who created the universe is just we know that he is kind we know that he is he wants good for everybody so therefore we cannot have a religion that promotes um racism that promotes bigotry you know that promotes xenophobia this would not make any sense whatsoever you know and when we look at islam when we look at the prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam now you can ask any any Christian, any any Jew, anybody. What is it that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did that is not befitting of a prophet? Just name one thing that he did that is not befitting of a prophet, and you will not find it. And therefore, he we know that he is our prophet. Now in Islam, we can really tell that Islam is the religion of Allah subhanahu wa taala because of the Quran and because of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. These two things are what we uh, you know hold really dear to know that these were actually messages from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I don't know if there are more questions am I being clear Tahmeen are you following my line of thought or am I just rambling too much um, yeah I think that's clear um, um, someone did have a question earlier about you know how do we determine that Islam is the exact religion so I feel like uh, you covered that yes oh, if any um, a little bit. I didn't go in depth, but uh, yeah, I th I think it was sufficient, right? Yeah, that was that was me. Okay. Were you satisfied with the answer? A little. Okay. Any more questions or anything else you'd like to know? Well, how do we determine that it's the exact God? Exact. The exact God. Yes. Well, there's only one God, so we don't really have to determine because. God is one, right? Right. So we have to determine if it's the right way to follow God, right? Yes. Yes. So we don't have to determine the right God because it's just one. How do we determine that it is the right way to follow God? Well, um, how do we determine that Islam is actually the true religion to, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Now, if we look at our history as human beings, and uh, we know because of faith, okay, because there's a, there's an element of faith in this as well. You know, we're not. I'm not going to say it's all completely 100 percent. You know, uh, facts here and there, because uh, as I said, even even atheism, there is an element of faith. Now we have faith, and we know that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala sent prophets and sent messengers to this earth. Um, your brother Samuel. Samuel, you believe that God sent prophets and messengers, right? You believe that? 
Yes, yes, I do. Yes, exactly. So if we believe that and we look at all prophets and all messengers, um, they all taught us to, they all taught their people to, to worship one God and to obey him. Although we do see, according to, you know, old texts, that these prophets uh, were sent to specific people for a specific time. We see that. And we do see, actually, that many of these prophets that came before us, they were pointing out to a single man that would come and that would lead mankind. All of them. So, uh, Brother Samuel, were you a Christian? Were you a agnostic? I was previously mm-hmm. Catholic, but I you bounced around a few religions. Okay. Did you did you uh, study Catholicism? Yes, uh, I was. Were you a layman? I was born Catholic. Okay, great. So, um, there is a verse, very interesting verse, in the the Old Testament. I think it's De- Deuteronomy. So I don't know how to pronounce it. Deuteronomy, probably. That's it. Uh, eighteen, eighteen. You know. And uh, we see that there was a promise to the to the Israelites. Okay, there was a promise that God would send a a, a Messiah, God would send an Elijah, and God would send a prophet. And in Deuteronomy, in Deuteronomy eighteen eighteen, it was very specific, you know, about a prophet. And this prophet, God would put words in his mouth. And even in the New Testament, you see there's that there's a prophet who's going to come. And we as Muslims, when we see, uh, when we look at, uh, for example, statements of, of Isa, of, of, of Jesus, like in the Bible, um, statements that say that, you know, that I must come and a comforter is going to come, a Holy Spirit will come, etc., etc. We all see that this is pointing to a man. And this man is the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We know that the Prophet Muhammad, if we believe in God, was definitely a force for good. Because... Uh, after he came, the entire world became a better place. Firstly, after he came. Secondly, all of his disciples were great people. Uh, I think there's a verse in the Bible which says that you will see the tree from the fruits. If the fruits are good, the tree is good. That's how you will determine a false prophet to a real prophet. And the Prophet Muhammad wasallam left the best trees. Sorry, the best fruits out there. So that we can know that he was definitely a tree from God. The Prophet Muhammad came and he confirmed everything that Jesus taught, that Musa taught, that Ibrahim taught, etc. Everything. And the Quran various times appoints to uh, Ibrahim, the Prophet Abraham. And uh, God always tells us, is this what Ibrahim followed? You know, uh, Christians believe in three... And the Trinity, is that what Ibrahim followed? You know, is that what he did? So let's go back and let's see what Ibrahim, what Abraham followed, and let us follow that, you know. Uh, And we know that the prophets did not come with different messages. The essential message was one, which is to believe in Allah, to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And now out of all three religions existing nowadays, the only ones who remain faithful to what Ibrahim, to what Abraham did, to what Moses did, to what Jesus, Isa did, are the Muslims, through the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I don't know if uh, I helped Brother Samuel, I hope that was clear. We can have another like specific talk for this, because this is also something that's very long, okay? No. Um, do you guys have any more questions or something? Samuel, was that clear? Oh. Yeah, yeah, it was. I'm sorry. I'm the yeah. guy. Great. Uh, Brother Tahmeed, um, I don't know if my talk was a bit complicated. Mm-hmm. I'm not seeing a lot of questions here. Um, yeah, I think it, uh, there were some questions it? earlier, but I feel, I feel like you answered them throughout your talk. So okay. I think it was good. Great. Do you have any questions? Um, not really a question. I think um, one one maybe point that I wanted to also mention is uh, like on on the topic of uh, evolution. Um, 
like uh, as as Muslims, um, you know, uh, we're we're able to we're, we're able to kind of critique evolution, uh, you know, uh, and we're, we're we're able to kind of accept from science that which doesn't go against the Quran. So I think as Muslims, we believe that there are two main things. Uh, mm-hmm. Number one is that. Um, Adam alayhi salam, he was created exceptionally. So, if if anything in science, or you know, any anybody, or you know, any one tries to discover some sort of archaeological fact or something, right, about oh no, like humans are, you know, where where descended from, you know, uh, apes or something like that, then we know that this isn't true, um, because we take the Quran as a higher, uh, you know, uh, as as a higher truth. Yeah, and the unchallenged truth, we could say that. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Bec- and what we would basically expect is that science or, you know, archaeological facts or historical facts, over time, they would kind of correct themselves. Whereas, you know, as Muslims, we, we would hold on to this uh, fact that Adam was created exceptionally. Um, and then the second, the second point would be, um, I think when you look into evolution, it's kind of, uh, it's mostly just a story. Like people, you know, when you actually look at the evidences and the... Um, you know the kind of uh, bones and stuff they dig out. The like there's so there's so many centuries apart. They're pretty much just putting together a story, and the story that they put together is is the story that they're kind of pushing in school. And I think you know we have to not be naive. People in the scientific community are there to make a profit. You know it's it's their job, uh, yeah. and they're not there just seeking the truth. You know just like today, there are certain ideologies in the world, right? which clearly don't make sense, but they're being pushed in schools, they're being pushed in scientific academia just for the sake of profit. So, you know, as Muslims, I think we shouldn't be naive to that as well. There you go, there you go. Exactly, exactly. Alhamdulillah, very, very good points. Um, yeah, aiding uh, on that, that there is definitely a trend to, as I mentioned in the beginning, to try to discredit um, religious uh, thought, you know, religious uh, perspective. And um, they would oftenly say that, you know, like, uh, I, I think I saw Richard Dawkins sometime. Uh, he was speaking to some Muslim guy and he said, oh, how, you know, uh, a man of your intellect, how is it that you are a Muslim? You know, how is it that you believe in God? uh with a with with your intellect so so they will always try to shame you into abandoning islam which uh is wrong because it is through the worship it is through allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we will actually increase so we we need to understand that islam one of the objectives is to free you from the shackles of this dunya and you just become completely free because you only answer to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when you do this this is when you achieve greatness this is when you achieve greatness, whether it be in, in research, whether it be in, in worship, you know, whatever it is, um, it, it will be that, you know. However, uh, let's point out to a, a point that, uh, you know, that people sometimes maybe tend to go too deep into science and sometimes they cannot uh, split the difference to what is science, what is um, religion, you know, sometimes they go too deep into science. And uh, they might end up making some mistakes, so it's uh, uh, it's, v- it's very dangerous. We need to be like walking on eggshells when we try to join science and the Quran, because we need to understand this is something that uh, the old scholars of Islam, the Sahaba, the Tabi'un, they didn't really do that. Okay, so we need to be cautious. Um, Islam generally speaks speaks uh, the Quran generally speaks about logical things that are not too hard to understand. Okay, they're not like too hard. It's not something that will take you mathematical equations in the entire board to understand. Okay, although there is one thing that uh, no, not not that I mentioned mathematical equation. I don't know if you guys have heard about this. I don't know if you've heard about this, Tahmeen. That the number of times that Earth is mentioned mentioned in the Quran, and the number of times water is mentioned in the Quran. Have you heard about this one before, Tahmeen? About the Earth and water. In the Quran? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's very interesting, you know. Uh, I haven't really counted them to see if it's true or not, but some shuyukh in my uh, in my city they said that yeah, it's actually true. That if you add both the number of uh, of um, the of of the the times Allah mentions Earth 
and the times that Allah mentions uh, water, if you add them up and you divide them, you would get the percentage of land and the percentage of water existing on the earth. You know, uh, do you think this is accurate, Tahmeen? Do you think have you tested that theory? Uh, I haven't tested it. Um, I, have, I haven't tested it out, but yeah, I've I've seen the same thing, and uh, I think it it's kind of like what you mentioned before. Like uh, it, it just points us towards looking at the creation. You know, that's that's the idea. Uh -huh. No, I'm just point out looking at the creation. Yes. So I don't know if there's uh, any more questions. If you guys thought this talk was beneficial, if there's any comments. Um, did you mention Zain as a scientist? Yeah, yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, I did. Oh, that's nice. Uh, in which field is she a scientist in? Um. Neuroscience. Neuroscience. Okay, that's nice. I I studied a bit of neurology. Okay, not enough to be a neuroscientist, but uh, it's, uh, it's 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 very interesting. So, have you heard the statement that the brain named itself? Have you heard of this statement before? Yes. What do you think of that? Um, I think uh, um, it's interesting. It's interesting. Do you think you are your brain? Um, no. <laughs> what are you? If you're not your brain, what are you? Uh, my soul. You are your soul. So it's not that the brain named itself. Let's say that we're a soul trapped in this in in, in a body. Okay. And uh, the only way that we can communicate with our body is through our brain, you know, because without the brain, we would not be able to communicate without our bodies. But we are not our brains. And this is interesting because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran points that we think with our hearts. Now, does the heart actually command the brain? Yeah, the heart actually does command the brain, you know, and, uh, you know, perhaps Sister Zaina one day can uh, write a piece uh, on this, you know, on the connection between uh, emotions, between uh, the heart, between the brain to see who's really calling the shots. If it's actually the brain, the brain is just perhaps interpreting signals um, and uh, taking care of, uh, you know, the, uh, the work that doesn't require our attention. You know, but it's interesting that the Quran says that it's the heart that thinks and our soul uh, would possibly be in our hearts because without your heart, you, would, you wouldn't be alive. Right. Uh, do you agree with me that you actually think with our hearts? So yeah. Shanita said the heart is an extension of the mind and the mind is linked to Iman. Um, I don't know if the heart is an extension of the mind. I think, uh, as I said, I think that we are all souls and uh, our souls are probably maybe in our jugular veins because uh, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pointed to in the Quran. But uh, we are souls, and uh, our souls are basically what uh, tell our our brains what to do, okay? And uh, mind, mind, brain, that's another very interesting philosophical talk. But yes, um, so last chance for questions, guys. Uh, last chance for questions, last chance for comments, if there are any. Um, no. Yeah, there's, there's one more thing. Um, I think in this whole discussion about kind of science and, uh, you know, evolution and then also like the design kind of argument, um, yes. I think one of, the, one of the strongest ways that I've heard it being phrased is, um, you know, the, the objective of a lot of these, uh, you know, theists or anti-theists or, you know, um, sign, scientism followers, right? Their objective is really to try and show that somehow all of this came through randomness. You know, that, that's, that's really the objective, that all of this kind of happened by chance. But I think the strongest proof is that the fact that there is science, for, for anyone to be able to do science, they have to assume that there is stability. They have to assume that the, that the, fu that the future is going to behave like the present and the present behaves at like the past. So anyone that does science, they have an assumption that 
you know, um, the universe is stable, that there is uniformity, that, you know, that all the same. So, you know, it's kind of a, um, it's a self-defeating argument for them to try and say that there is chaos because you're already assuming that there is stability. And when you, when you look at like evolution and things like this, for example, you know, if you just ask this question, right, like either, either you know, uh, all of this came through randomness or it didn't. And if it didn't come through randomness, then that means that it must have been, you know, it, it, it wasn't by chance. Then the only other option is that it was created this way, that it was designed this way, that it was willed this way, that there was something that, you know, uh, guided humans to be like this. So I think just kind of having the option between it's either randomness or not, that kind of made things very clear for me. Yes, 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 yes. Pretty much, pretty much. Uh, you know, the, the arguments for pro, pro, um, pro religion are just very overwhelming, you know, and we have to know that people, most people tend to enter into kufr because of uh, um, pride. They don't want to accept it. It's not that they don't know it. It's that deep inside their hearts, you know. And, you know, something very interesting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the, the people who disbelieve. That when they are in peril, Allah says, وَإِذَا رَكِبُوا فِي الْفُلْكِ دَعُوا اللَّهُ مُخْلِسِينَ When they are sailing in the sea, and they know Allah, and they call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, there is an atheist. There's a guy on, on YouTube, you know. Um, he was basically saying that, oh, you know, I've tested this theory. There were people who were uh, on the verge of death, on their deathbed in the hospitals, and they weren't nervous at all. I'm like, sure, because you're not staring at death in your, at your face. You're, you, you're like in your deathbed. But if you're at the middle of the sea and you see a giant wave, not even a giant wave, maybe you see a shark, maybe you see a whale, maybe you see a lion in the jungle, you will know and you will remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that in that moment you are going to call for God. You will call him, even if you claim you don't believe in him. But we all act like we believe in him. So, you know, uh, atheists are pretty, pretty much self-defeating arguments, you know, even though they'll like to act all cool and mighty, but they are. I think there's a comment from Isa. We have Muslims claiming some verses is linked, is linked to science. And they do, and which they don't, and this opens doors to shubhat. So Muslims claiming verses is linked to science. Now look, because we know that the Quran is the word of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Okay, uh, it is possible that some verses do point to some scientific facts. It is it is possible. We don't we don't take that out of the equation, but also we cannot say for certainty. Because the Prophet Muhammad did not tell us certainly this is what that verse means. Like for example, there's the verse that says that we created the universe and we are expanding it. And they'll say, oh look, this is evidence for the expansion of the universe. Possibly. It's possibly an evidence, or maybe not, you know. I don't really like to go too much into this, uh, because again, I said we're not really experts in science and uh, experts in religion at the same time. So it's just good to know that at least we can say that there are no scientific inaccuracies or mistakes in the Quran. There are none. Zero. Find me an ancient book, a book of religion, other than the Quran, that there are no fallacies, that there are no mistakes, there are no inconsistencies. You will not find it. The Quran is the only one. So, you know, we know that there are no mistakes, you know, it could be understood that way, maybe, maybe yes, maybe not, okay, let's not uh, jump and say, oh, this is what the real tafsir is, you know, uh, no, you know, that wouldn't make sense, because the Prophet wasallam told us that he taught us everything we need to know, so, you know, it could be, or maybe not, okay, um, yeah, any comments on this, Tahmeen? We close this. Um, no, no comments from me. Jazakallah khair. Okay, alhamdulillah. So, okay, guys, I think that's it for today. Jazakallah khair and for your time, for your patience. I hope this conversation was beneficial for everybody. It was definitely for me. And uh, inshallah, we'll see you guys in a future event. Barakallahu feekum. So, yeah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.